guys how to make a strawberry pistachio pastry. So in this video, I'm just showing you guys how to make one, but the recipe for the pistachio filling can make up to two to three of these pastries. So I just wanted to let you guys know that beforehand. For this recipe, you'll need 10 to 13 strawberries, puff pastry sheets, one cup plus two tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two large eggs, one fourth cup of sugar, two tablespoons cornstarch, two tablespoons unsalted butter, half a cup of heavy cream, one fourth cup of chopped pistachio. So let's get on with the video. We're gonna start off by taking some milk and vanilla essence. So you need one cup of milk as well as two more tablespoons of milk. So I'm just gonna add it into this bowl here because we're gonna be heating it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that. Two tablespoons. Then we're just gonna add about half a teaspoon of vanilla essence into the milk. Like so, give it a quick stir. Try to get as much of it off as soon as you can. And then we're just gonna place this onto the stove and go to a medium size speed so, it's, so that it's not too hot. And then we're just gonna let it start boiling. So we're gonna just leave it here for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna just cover it with a lid and let it boil for 10 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and work on the next part. Okay, so for this part, you need one large egg, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of butter, and one fourth cup of granulated sugar. So we're gonna start out by taking the one fourth cup of sugar and putting it into a saucepan because we will be heating this up as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get one fourth. And then we're gonna take the egg and crack it. We're going to add in the two tablespoons of cornstarch. Corn and then we're just going to mix this together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a whisk. And we're just going to mix it. Try to get around the edges so that the cornstarch isn't stuck to the edge. And that's good enough. Now we're going to take the milk that we have heated. So we're going to take it off the stove. As you can see, it's very hot. We're just going to let it cool down slightly. So we're going to let the milk cool down a bit. And then just slowly, we're going to start pouring it in. We have to do this very carefully because we do not want the eggs to cook because of the heat of the milk. So just a little bit and then mix it. And then we're gonna put this onto the stove. I'll be right up. So that now this is on the stove, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start the heat again. I'll keep it at the lowest heat possible and we're just gonna start mixing it. And you're gonna be continue to mix it until it turns into a thick mixture. So this will take a while, so around three to four minutes. So just keep whisking. So we're gonna keep whisking this until it turns into a thick, glossy texture. As you can see currently, it's really airy. So we're just gonna continue to whisk it until you get a really smooth and thick, shiny mixture.
as you can see the mixture is starting to get thicker right about now because you can see the movement the strokes stay on the thing so it's getting thicker so we're just going to keep whisking it and as you continue the whisk the air bubbles will start to disappear and there you have it this part is complete as you can see, it's really thick and glossy. So we're just gonna turn off the heat and let it cool for a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in the two tablespoons of butter. So just give it a minute or two to rest and we'll be back to add in the butter. So now that the mixture has cooled down, I'm gonna transfer it into a bowl and then we're gonna add in the butter and add in the two tablespoons of butter right there and then just with the whisk I'm going to whisk it in because the mixture is still quite hot warm where the butter melts quite easily now that the butter is mixed in I'm just going to let it sit for another two minutes and then I'm going to take a cling wrap and put it on top cover it nice and properly and then put, leave it in the fridge to rest now this is wrapped, we're just going to let it sit in the fridge for two hours and then we are going to do the next part. So now that the custard mixture has cooled down, I'm going to take half a, half a cup of whipping cream and whisk it till it forms stiff peaks. So, and I also have pre-cut uh, one fourth cup of pistachios. So then once the whipped cream is mixed, we're going to add that in. So let's get started with the whipped cream. So So now that we have that, you can either use a hand whisk or an electric one. I like to use my hand sometimes. It's a nice arm workout, I guess. So I'm just going to whisk it until it forms stiff peaks. So you guys will know that the stiff peaks have formed when you can flip the bowl upside down without the whipped cream dropping. So, and also something to keep in mind when you're whisking is to just move it in one direction. So as you can see, it's, it's formed stiff peaks. It does not move. So it's ready now. Now I'm going to take the custard mixture that we made earlier that's now cooled and I'm going to slowly mix in parts of the whipped cream into the custard. So for this you will need a spatula. So with the spatula I'm going to just start folding in the mixture. So just going under the custard and then moving it on top. It does take a while to mix, but it is worth it. So you're taking the whipped cream, going around below, and then folding it over. So this makes sure, this helps mix it without ruining the airiness of the whipped cream and it also adds more to the custard itself, making it more creamy and lighter. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, and then once it's mixed, I'm gonna add a third more of the whipped cream mix and then add the final bit and keep mixing until it's done. Now that it's all mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and add the one fourth cup of chopped pistachios into this and Fold it until the pistachios are well incorporated.
as you can see it is now well incorporated and I'm going to put this back into the fridge and let it chill while we work on our next step of creating the puff paste of making the pastry so I'll get that set up and I'll be right back so I've gone ahead and um, defrosted the pre-made puff pastry sheets this is a quick way when you don't have time to actually make the puff pastry itself because it can get really complicated especially if you're living in a country like I am Singapore it's really hot and the butter melts really fast when you're trying to make it so as this is starting almost defrosted I'm just gonna cut this into two sheets of strips uh, of 8 centimeters by 24 centimeters and once that is done I'm going to just place it on this tray which I have lined with baking paper baking sheets and then I pre I'm preheating the oven currently at 175 degrees Celsius for around 10 to 12 minutes and then after that once this is cut out I'm going to place it here and bake it for between 10 to 15 minutes after I have egg washed it so that it can get the nice golden color so I'm going to go ahead and cut it So now that they're cut, I'm just going to peel them off the plastic and place them down right there. And then the second strip. Now that I have them placed here, I'm going to go take an egg and whisk it together and then just brush this on with the egg wash. So I'm going to go ahead and crack the egg in the bowl. And then taking a fork, I'm just going to mix the whites and the yolks together. So they're well combined. So now I'm just going to take this pastry brush and dip it into the egg and just brush it on top like so. So this egg wash makes, helps get the gorgeous golden brown color that you see on pastries because without it you don't get that color. And when you're egg washing, you can always do either just yolk, just whites, or both, the whole egg. So the quickest way is just to do the whole egg unless you're an amazing egg cracker and can separate the two because I can't. And there you have it. That is nice and egg washed. And now I'm going to go and put this in the oven for... 10 to 15 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius and one, I will be back once this is baked. While the puff pastry is baking, I'm going to just take this custard mix that I have with filling and I'm going to put it into this piping bag. A quick and easy way is to take a glass, place the bag on it and then just fold it like so around and then just making sure that this is nice and open, that way you can easily scoop in the filling and it's less of a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the mix in. I haven't put a tip on the piping bag because for this you really don't have to. And this is a reusable cloth piping bag that I'm using currently. And 
there you have it. I have filled the piping bag. Now just re just pull this up. There you go. And then you have it right here. But there. It's ready. If you want, you can always just twist the side. Close. And that's ready for use. So I'm just going to put this to the side. And once the pastry is baked, we'll be back to decorate. So oh, as the puff pastry cools, I'm going to start cutting up the strawberries so that they're ready to place once it's all cooled down. So I've already cut off the base of the strawberry so that it is even on the thing. And I'm just going to cut vertically like that. And I'm going to keep going. I have 13 strawberries currently. So these are going to go on top of the filling that I have made. And I will be back when I have finished cutting the strawberries. So now that everything's ready, I'm going to take one of the puff pastry strips, paste it place it so that the flat, flat side is facing up and then taking the filling that we have prepared I'm gonna pipe it on so I'm just gonna go in a zigzag motion going from one side to the other filling up the space and once that is done I'm taking the strawberries that I've chopped up right here and just placing them on top and once that is completed we're just gonna take the second puff pastry shade and place it on top here's a view of what it looks like so that's it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed also, comment down below other recipes that you'd like me to create a tutorial on. And that's it. Bye.